Hello, Supervisor Simidian. Thank you. Where's the phone? Where's the phone? She, just so you know, we don't she have has the phone, but they're on speakerphone what? somewhere. Is it on so do you have any Luigi? members of the public at your location? No, we have one staff member who is present. Okay, thank you. If you need help with crowd control, let us know. And, and this is Vera Tucker speaking. I invited him. If any oh. member of the public does show up at the teleconference okay. location Thank and you. desires to speak, we need to allow that. So just just... your invitation. Supervisor Smidian? Yes? If any member of the public shows up at your location and wishes to speak, please offer them the opportunity to do so. I'm going to ask Council Member Oliverio and Chu to do that since this is their home court, not mine. Thank you. Thank okay. you. All right, thank you, everyone. Welcome to the Governing sure. Board. Of the thank you. Welcome to the Governing Board of the Santa Clara Valley Habitat Agency. I believe we will have to take roll call um, by voice. Okay. Board members Ariano, Tucker. Here. Constantine. Here. Tate. Here. Herrera. Uh, Oliverio. Tate. Chu. Here. Wasserman. Here. Submitted. Here. Thank you. Do we have a quorum on the governing board? We do. Absolutely. Okay. Good. Right, at this moment, I'd like to call for any members of the public who would like to come and speak on items not on the agenda. I can hear you. You're going to want to really speak into your mic. At this time, we're calling for members of the public who would like to speak on items not on the agenda. Do you have anybody in your area? In San Jose. They don't have anybody from the public. Nope. Okay, moving on to uh, Governing Board and Implementation Board Action Regular Business Item 1, approve the minutes of August 15th, Special Joint Meeting of the Governing Board and Implementation Board. So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. Go ahead. I. I. This is Ken Schreiber. Um, we have a quorum for the Governing Board. Right now, I believe we do not have a quorum for the Implementation Board. Correct. We're missing one. Um, so I would suggest that under the action uh, for regular business, that the He's Implementation coming. Board approve the minutes, and then we shift the Governing Board part of that. Oh, excuse me, the Governing other Board around. approve it, and we shift the Implementation Board over to the Implementation Board agenda uh, on the Okay, that's fine. So we have a motion to approve from the governing board the minutes of August 15th. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Is Dennis Kennedy on the implementation board? He is. Dennis is right behind us. Hi, Dennis. So now we have a quorum. Thank you. Let's do a roll call. Do you want to call the implementation board to order as well? Okay. Sure. Yeah. And I'll take a roll call. Board we members Ariano. Tucker? Here. Constantine? Here. Crabtree? Camus? Yakubu? Here. Courtney? Wasserman? Here. Schmidt? Lazat? Here. Kennedy? Here. Fitzwater? Here. Thank you. And Madam Chair, now the Implementation Board does have a quorum and we can take that action. <laughs> he does not like to do things twice. <laughs> That's right. Okay. Can I clarify the motion? <laughs> Thank you. And here's here's crap. We are uh, the motion. I believe now is from both the implementation board and the governing board to approve the minutes of the August 15th special joint meeting. We have a motion by Member Constantine and second by Member Wasserman. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, roll call. Do we have to do roll call? Sorry. Yeah. We do. Board members Tucker? Yes. Constantine? Yes. Crabtree? Yes. Tate? Here. Yes. Oliverio? Yes. Chu? Yes. Yes. Yakubu? Yeah. Sorry, bear with me for just a second. Kuba. Wasserman? Here. Samidian? Yes. Yep. Kennedy? Yes. Lazat? Yes. Fitzwater? Yes. Thank you. Okay, motion. <laughs> On to item two, report from the interim executive officer. Thank you. Um, 
moving the mic closer to try to get the sound into the, into the, the magic of the, the airwaves. Um, a couple of things. One is, uh, in January, there is a regular meeting of the Implementation Board and a regular meeting of the Governing Board. And what we are going to um, put on, that, on those agendas is your meeting schedule. There's a meeting in November of the Implementation Board. There's not a meeting of the Governing Board. Uh, but we will be bringing back to you the issue of meeting schedule um, for a variety of reasons. So what we would uh, like people to do, if you, if you can so do it, is you start looking to the, not just the end of the year, but 2014. If you just put a pencil hold on, on Thursday afternoons, third, third Thursday of the month afternoons, uh, and we'll see how that plays out in January. But uh, I know that getting, getting things on schedules is at times the first step in actually having a meeting. Uh, and then on another item, the next meeting and, in, and future meetings will be held in the City of Morgan Hill City Council chambers. So this is the last time we will have to set up all of the AV equipment in here, et cetera. This will be a much more convenient location. And the City Hall Chambers um, is at the corner of Alkier and Peak. There's the community center, or the, the uh, development center, and the City Hall, but, and it's in essentially the old City Hall. We'll provide directions there, but it's well, it's well marked on the site. Uh, but we'll start meeting in there, and that will help uh, in, in the recording and all the AV type things. Uh, I just wanted, I've had several questions. On the day of the signing ceremony, I opened the Mercury News in the morning, and on the front page there were three stories. One was the shutdown, one was something with Intel and chip issues, and the other was the return of the Swenson's Hawk to Santa Clara County, which actually ruined my breakfast. Um, Swenson's Hawk, if it actually took up longer term residence here in any great numbers, is a very difficult species to try to address from a mitigation and restoration standpoint. My colleagues in Solano and Yolo and others struggle mightily with that species, but we have not had one, in, and that's been fine with us. Uh, but from the standpoint of the, of the bird loving community, certainly there's a Swenson's Hawk returned, a nest, a chick, survived, fledged, is now migrating. Uh, that is not an issue for the habitat agency. Uh, biologists think, uh, I've talked to, think that this may be, uh, the Swenson's hawk passes over the county on its way north in the spring. And occasionally they're seen here, and this may this have been a situation where people sort of like, the, the hawk liked the tree, decided to take up residence. But there is no indication yet of any great uh, notable Swenson's hawk population. So it's a CEQA issue for local, uh, jurisdictions in terms of potential habitat areas, uh, it's not going to be, it's not part of the habitat agency and we don't really need to worry about it. Uh, and may not ever have to worry about it. Um, and the other thing I wanted to highlight was executive officer recruitment. The RFQ for a recruitment firm, commonly called the headhunter, um, is out and being reviewed by a number of firms um, that have contacted me and said, we're very interested and we'll get back to you. The, uh, that RFQ responses will be coming in on November the 14th. Um, we have an executive officer committee of the implementation board of whom I believe we have one member here, uh, Supervisor Wasserman. Um, so I will, maybe after the meeting we can talk briefly, but we'll need to be, start moving towards setting up uh, some discussions of that committee. Uh, my, my hope is certainly that the committee actually will interview the final firms, make a recommendation on which firm to go with. Um, I think this is a matter of comfort, probably as much as almost anything uh, with, with the people involved, uh, since these firms all have should have good resources. Uh, but we'll, I'll talk to you afterwards, and then I'll start coordinating in terms of, of getting that process moving. My objective is to get out. Well, that's one of it. Yes, I keep using interim. Uh, and I reassure my wife that I'm using the word interim. Uh, but my objective in the near term is that if, if the RFQs come in, in in November, to bring to the implementation board as part of the November agenda, uh, since by that point we will have a, a price range, uh, a request to delegate to me the authority to sign a contract not to exceed. You've done that in other areas. 
and then working with Vera to have the, the, the selection made by the, by the executive officer committee and that we would move to have a contract in place by December 20th. That is essentially the date before things really start to shut down for the holidays. So that by the time we're in January, they're under contract, on board, ready to go, and um, that we can keep that process moving um, as, we, as we get into 2014. And let me ask Vera for just a minute. Uh, Vera has com is completing an agreement with a firm to, to assist on issues related to compensation and structuring of the position. So. Basically, is to give you an overview, for example, of, you know, obvi I think obviously someone will come in on contract, you know, whether it be in-house or, you know, temporarily, like, you know, however you want to structure that. But it comes to when you have the discussion of what type of benefits do you want to provide. Um, do you want to provide, for example, typical public agency benefits or not? What are your options? And what kind of options can you, can you go with? And so I'm attempting to have someone give you a good overview of what those options would be for you to consider. And it, it would likely happen next year sometime, or it could even happen after the executive officer is hired with the understanding that they're to put together a certain package um, while they're here that can be also be used with other employees in the future if we need to hire other employees. So you know that would be up to you to decide. It'll give you sort of a menu of options. And I'll be given to the board confidentially. Okay, is that is that your final? Yes. Are you done? Uh, so in other words, executive officer process is moving and we want to keep pushing it fairly hard as we head toward the end of the year. Well, um, does anyone have that. any questions? Because I have a question, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just saying I appreciate the fact that uh, Ken is motivated. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The question I have is about, if I understand you correctly, you're asking to then be given the right to make the offer, but are you also anticipating the, what, 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 what doing I all the, the interviews? The recommendation will be in, in November is that the implementation board um, provide me the authority to sign an agreement based on the recommendation of the executive officer committee. Okay, okay. Up to a maximum of a certain dollar amount. No, I'm not going to make the selection. Uh, well, I mean, uh, are, we gonna <laughs> are we going to show up in January and have someone we may not even know? Um, and since we're working with this person. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I think if others want to join this the This is the firm, Ken. Excuse me? This is to approve the head heading oh, okay. firm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's not. not Ken uh, will not be gone in January. I will not be gone in January. Just to approve which firm to. No, no, no. No, the, no problem. The, the, then. The, okay, I was totally yeah, uh, okay. going the, down the, the wrong road. Certainly, <laughs> my sense is, and let me just clarify that point, is that in actually selecting an executive officer, you will need to put together, and I think it's, it's everybody who's participating in this process, put together an interview process. And I can imagine certainly that certainly board members will be involved. There may be opportunities. It's not unusual to have uh, members of advisory committees and, and others involved. So there will be a, a full, probably a long process to do that. Okay. No problem. Thank you. We have no action on this if there are no other questions. Uh, we will move on to item three, approval of the minutes for September 19th from the governing board. So moved. Oops. Second. We have a motion to approve and a second. And roll call, please. Board members Tucker? Yes. Constantine? Yes. Tate? Yes. Oliverio? Here. Chu? Here. Wasserman? Here. Samidian? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Minutes pass. Item four, participating special entities, establishment of non-mitigation PSE charges, and delegation of uh, decision-making to the implementation board. Go ahead. Uh, allow me to provide a little bit of an overview. This is a two-step process we're, we're having in front of you today with actions by the governing board and then, then recommended actions by the implementation board. Essentially, the way the Joint Powers Authority Agreement uh, is set up is that any, any responsibilities not designated for the implementation board are reserved to the governing board, and there is no mention of participating special entities. So we are uh, first recommending that 
uh, you refer, you delegate to the, the governing board, delegate to the implementation board ongoing responsibility for participating special entity agreements. Uh, we're also asking the governing board to approve uh, participating special entity uh, charges. And, uh, and we're not calling, I'm, I'm not calling them fees in the sense of trying to avoid confusion with the Mitigation Fee Act, but they are charges. Um, very briefly, and then the Implementation Board is being re is recommended to review and approve a PSC, participate, participating special entity, I will now use PSC ongoing, a PSC policy, and this has been worked through by staff uh, through a whole series of discussions, and also to uh, review a template PSC agreement, and that also has involved a lot of staff discussions, a lot of work by Vera, and then forwarding that to the wildlife agencies by, the plan requires the wildlife agencies to sign off on that template agreement. So that is one of their obligations. And very briefly, in terms of background, because there have been a variety of questions about PSEs. Um, first, they are, are government agencies and regulated utilities that are not subject to local land use authority. So they can't go to Gilroy or Morgan Hill or San Jose or the county and get a permit to build something. Uh, they are on their own in that regard, and when they need endangered species coverage, they're also on their own. They're not part of the habitat plan, although we anticipated in the plan that there would be PSEs. Uh, they're built into the budget, uh, and that there would be this whole process. It all comes out of, out of the habitat plan. Um, and it's a discretionary action. Every PSC approval is a yes or no decision by the ultimately by the implementation board. So there is, it, it is purely, it's totally discretionary and that's very clear. Um, the amount of covered activity, if, if uh, Caltrans comes in for a safety improvement and they're going to use, uh, you know, 1.3 acres of land is going to have to be converted from natural to road something or another. That acreage counts against the entire habitat plan's total limit of covered activity and total limit of take. Um, that will be monitored over time. Uh, I don't anticipate large projects coming in in this regard, although it could happen, but generally, but, but that amount of authorization will be monitored on an annual basis. It will be in the annual report. So we would be, want to be very sensitive off in the future in terms of whether it is cumulatively accounting to, for a lot. And I don't quite know what a lot is, but we'll know it. You'll know it when you when you see it. Um, but that's not where we're at now, and we don't anticipate being there probably for a long, long time. Um, the there, from my standpoint, there are some real benefits for the PSEs. Uh, the plan calls out certainly that they will provide some re revenue to the habitat agency. I think that's important. That's nice. Um, but for me. Certainly, extending the plan coverage and simplifying the endangered species permitting process for essentially local organizations, whether it be a community college, or Caltrans, or PG&E doing gas line maintenance work or whatever. These are local projects. And the ones that certainly have come to me inquiring about this, I would say all are providing some type of public benefit. And that's not a finding in approving a PSC, but I think it's the reality that these are projects that benefit the community. Uh, we want safer roads. Gavin College has a water tank that needs to be <laughs> repaired. It's a little scary in terms of its condition. And they need, and without the habitat plan, they face a long, torturous process of trying to get approval for those types of things. So that's what you'll expect. Uh, that will, is what I expect you'll see, you'll see are small projects that overall provide benefits to the community will, and can use the habitat plan to simplify their life and actually move projects online at a faster pace. So I think there are some real win-wins in this. Um, and again, if something is excessively large, objectionable, weird, or whatever, there's always a simple response. No. Period. End of discussion. And there is a, in, in the language, an appeal process if the executive officer says, no, this is just not going to go. Uh, and they want to come and talk to the implementation board, that's fine. They can come and talk to the implementation board. And you'd have a staff recommendation to say, no, this is not appropriate. And you're the ultimate decision maker. So that's where it should logically rest. 
So with those few comments, and now I've run together two different agenda items, two different boards, but I thought it was better to give that overview than trying to somehow split it between, between two sets of comments. But again, the first is the governing board, and that is establishing non-mitigation charges and then delegating PSE decision-making to the implementation board. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have any questions for staff? So if we do a motion, can we do four, one, and two together? So, uh, two resolutions. Do you have any other questions? Um, I believe you should probably do one separately and two separately. Okay. So be 4.1 and 4.2 okay. separately. Waiting for a motion for <laughs> item 4.1. Adopt resolution establishing non-mitigation charges for the PSC agreements. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Board members Tucker? Yes. Constantine? Yes. Tate? Yes. Oliverio? Here. Chu? Yeah. Wasserman? <laughs> I'm sorry. Suminian. Here. What? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> For God's sakes, anybody know? <laughs> Thank you. Motion For the record, can we also establish that here means yes? <laughs> <laughs> Are we in agreement? Here. 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 <laughs> yes, we're in agreement. Oh, Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll entertain a motion for item 4.2. Okay. Move approval of 4.2. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Madam, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, yes. may I just ask through our, our council, Vera? Um, we all sit on a lot of committees and commissions. Why is a roll call necessary? I, I know we went through this six months ago. I bring it up every Why is today a roll call necessary? Today in particular, the roll call is necessary because we have a telephonic meeting. And there would be no way, um, it's required by the Brown Act, is the easy answer for a teleconference whenever you have that occur. And I believe the reasoning behind that is if you had members of the public in San Jose, at the San Jose location listening, they wouldn't know who was voting how if it was raising your hands or saying aye and no. And the same for people sitting in the audience here would not be able to know what the folks in San Jose, nor would our clerk, by the way, if people were raising their hands or all saying aye or no. Okay. And it so, would only be an issue if there was a name, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. But usually okay. with most of the action items like this, a roll call okay. vote's advisable. Okay. Board members Tucker? Yes. Constantine? Yes. Tate? Yes. Oliverio? Yes. Chu? Yes. Wasserman? Yes. Semidian? Yes. Thank you. Got it. Thank you. Motion passes. You. On to any future governing board initiated agenda items. Does anyone on the board would like to bring anything to the agenda? Seeing none, we will now adjourn the governing board and move on to the implementation board. All right. Implementation board item number five. If we could also mention, I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt, but I think that all three members of the Pleasure. San Jose location are at the all government good. boards and they're including as well. Gentlemen, Supervisor yes. Sumidian, we've adjourned the governing board meeting. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Have a good afternoon. Have right. a good day, right. gentlemen. I was, ho I was hoping you'd leave them on. <laughs> That's... Here, now we don't need to do right? a little I can't Where are you going? Quiet. I'm good. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, we did a roll call earlier, correct? Yes. We did. Okay. So, we are now on item number five. Move approval. <laughs> Motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Anybody from the public? No and no. And you want a roll call. Now we have no one on the phone, Vera? No. Okay, so do you need a roll call again? Or can I say all in favor say aye? It would be better if you did a roll call. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> roll call, please. She doesn't really want one. She doesn't know bugs you. Board members Tucker? Yes. Constantine? Yes. Crabtree? Yes. Yakubu? Abstain. And he's Yakuba. Uh, Wasserman is yes. 
Um, Lizotte? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. Fitzwater? Yes. Thank you. So moved. Item number six. The subject matter is participation in special entities, um, PSEs, adoption of policy and approval of a template agreement. Ken? Um, just in addition to my comments from before, which are yep. the primary ones, uh, Vera and I met with uh, staff and uh, council for the Open Space Authority and went through this. Um, there are two, and, and we incorporated a couple of changes that Vera can, can discuss in more detail if the board wishes. Uh, what I wanted to highlight, though, is that there are two organizations that are uh, unusual in the sense of the PSE process. Um, well, one, it's the Open Space Authority. Santa Clara County Parks and Recreation, by including in the plan, will, its lands can be used to value them to offset county fees for the habit, for some of the county fees for the habitat plan, not wet water, wet, wetlands. But that's the county. The Open Space Authority is not a permittee, so they have to be a PSC. So the PSC agreement is then linked to the plan obligations or expectations that they will provide up to 1,000 acres of existing open space land for the reserve system. The value of that will be calculated and given the level of activity of the Open Space Authority, that will probably be far more value than they will expend over the next 50 years in terms of fees. But that creates, that puts them in this oddball category, very different than other PSCs who um, don't have a, an obligation in the plan that they've agreed to. Okay. Thank you. Any comments about this? I have one comment I want to make, but I want to hear from others. Commissioner Tucker? <clears throat> I, we'll do public comment. Thank you. Yep, go right ahead. Public comment? Yep, excuse me. I just wanted to say thanks for um, all your work. Speak up to a microphone if you would. Oh, oops. Yeah. Just for the recording, we don't have anybody in San Jose listening. I'm Virginia Holtz, Chair of the Board of the Open Space Authority, and I just want to confirm that we are in agreement with what is being presented here. We did have our attorney look at the, and um, uh, most of his recommendations were placed in, in the document, and we're really satisfied with that. So I just wanted to assure everybody that we're on the same page, and we, we're glad that we're getting some framework to all this. Super. We like happy customers. <laughs> All right, Commissioner Tucker. I just wanted to ask when we, in the future years, we already have it in our plan to add additional PSEs to the list of PSEs that are yes, acceptable. Yes, uh, there, there's no um, Is there a definitive in list. There's a, a, an example list. Uh, we try to avoid a definitive list because new agencies may be created or we could miss one in the process. Uh, but they all will have to fall under the category of a governmental agency, local, state, federal, uh, whatever, or a regulated utility. And I've had contacts with PG&E, and I have a meeting up there next week with about 10 or 12 PG&E staff members, I'm finding out. <laughs> and San Jose Water Company has contacted me regarding a uh, reservoir site they want to develop and some pipelines, and they will need the same type of coverage. Okay. So there, may, there probably are other, I, I don't have a list of regulated utilities, but I'm sure there are some But others. I mean, there is a process in place. They don't just email you and say, I want to be part of this. Uh, well, <laughs> email, phone. Uh, That's what I wanted to know. Uh, get referral button. Oftentimes, I think these are coming through referral from the wildlife, from the federal or state wildlife agencies, where they start out down the path and go to the Sacramento Fish and Wildlife Service, and they say, "No, don't, no, go to Kent, <laughs> or go to go to the habitat agency." Oh, thank you. See no other questions. I have a question for you, Ken. The discussion I was having this afternoon. Um, we have this goal of obtaining X number of acres. You know, we also need dollars for operating expenses. What are your thoughts on, on somebody comes to us and for mitigation purposes they say, you know, here's 500 acres. Doesn't pay the rent. No. Is there any discussion about these acreage we do want, this, these acres we do want, these acres we don't, or that um, the land mitigation cannot exceed 75% of the total compensation so that we have some cash to keep the lights on. Have you given any thought to this? Uh, yes. A um, couple different thoughts. One is that any agreement to uh, substitute land in lieu of fees, which is sort of one subset of this possibility, although that will not be a PSE, it will be just a regular 
property owner wanting to do something. But any uh, require any effort to use land in lieu has to meet a series of findings. And right at the top of the list is consistency with the habitat plans, conservation strategies, et cetera. It has to be approved by the wildlife agencies. Um, and the credit given in the land in lieu process, the total credit given does not include the portion of fees for land management and maintenance. So if you had a fee of $100,000, uh, and I've not yet calculated, I, but it's in the Nexus study actually, uh, but there's, there's likely to be maybe 25% of that that would have to be paid in any event. You couldn't offset the land in lieu, the land for that, because land, because of exactly your concern, but you get land, but you don't have any money to manage it. Commissioners, what I was concerned about was being, you can be land rich and cash poor. Mm -hmm. right. um, I know some senior citizens that have 100% equity in their home and they're having trouble paying PG&E. So it, it all depends on, on your situation. And we do have a goal of obtaining X number of acres of open space with endangered species and da 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 da. Um, but we also need to pay for the management and ongoing operations that, that were there. And when I was reading section D2 and especially section D7, you know, and I look at the land in lieu and the land in lieu and the land in lieu, I just wanted to make sure, Ken, that we had something in there. And that 25% number is a good number. And, that, and that's an estimate off the top of my I understand. Back. And when I said 75% land and 25%, that was an estimate as well. But at, at a certain point, you know, if people just kept giving us land, we'd run out of cash. Mm -hmm. If they right. kept giving us cash, cash is always okay because we can use cash to buy land. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to make sure as, as we're moving forward, you know, somebody says, I want to develop this, and here I'll give you these 290 acres as my HCA fee. We say thank you very much, and we do. And then our executive director says I haven't gotten paid this month. So I just want to make sure, and our attorney. Oh, you're asking a question? I, I, I'm sorry. I wanted to just add something. When we I'm an auctioneer, so when I saw your hand go up, I was going to take your 400. All right. When we were for, when we were formulating this policy and the agreement that went with it, one of the comments from the Open Space Authority is that they wanted us to include the land in lieu possibility in here because that was their situation more than other PSEs. So there's a bit of a chicken and an egg going on here, and the PSC policy is going before you, before a land in lieu policy will be. So in the next couple, two, three months, you will probably be reviewing and, and potentially adopting a land in lieu policy that really is directed toward those, those, that land and that habitat that needs to be conserved under the plan with a real focus toward that. And one of the focuses that I think everyone is very concerned about is not taking people's junk properties right. in land in lieu either. And so there's a balancing act that we need to somehow finesse in that policy. And you'll, so you'll be getting a policy that's like this for land in lieu and also a, a proposed sort of a template agreement for land in lieu and that, that needs to comply with that policy as well. Super, thank you. That was included as a result of OSA's comments primarily. Thank you. Thank you. Can, and can, one can. other uh, piece of information on this, and that's the East Contra Costa experience, where their plan was approved in early 2007, just as the economy went down the elevator shaft. Um, they have had very little fee revenue, just barely enough to keep the doors open and going. They've, they've been very successful with grants and other programs to acquire land. So they are probably, they may be 100 times ahead of their stay ahead, you know, you have to balance impacts. And there may be, a, they may be 100 times ahead. They've acquired so much land. Um, the wildlife agencies have been very understanding. And they, they basically have said the most important thing is to acquire land. And if that means you don't have money to do other, anything else but to, to repair the fencing and lease it for five years, that's okay, go ahead. The land won't go away and we'll get to the management, more detailed management issue as funding unfolds in, you know, in the next years. And they are only now doing their first uh, site-specific land management plan. Hmm. Okay. And they started in January 2007. So, so there is some, some willingness by the wildlife agencies to recognize the reality of cash flow. Thank you. Any further discussion? I Anyone just want to oh. kind of yes. follow up on that and get a better understanding. It, are we positioning ourselves so that we'll never be put in a position where we'll have this land and because we need cash that we'd have to start selling it? In other words, selling our 
our habitat that we've conserved mm -hmm. over the years, um, are we going to be protecting ourselves against ever having to do that? Um, eventual, well, two parts of the answer. One is that any acquisition of land, whether it be by a grant or through a in lieu agreement or whatever, needs to be approved by the wildlife agencies. They have that approval role in the plan. So they have to, to bless it, that it's appropriate for the plan, it's good land, it's valuable, et cetera. That land will move over time to have a in perpetuity conservation easement that will lock it in place. Uh, it is, I can't think of a situation where the agency would ever be in a situation of having to sell land. I mean, the wildlife agencies, I can't imagine them approving the sale of land. And they would have to approve it. Because for them, land is the most important thing. You get the land, and even if you can't do much with it for a while, as long as you've got the land, you can, you can move ahead on the conservation aspects. If you lose the land, then you don't have any choice anymore. So I can't imagine them approving the sale of land. Um, and certainly, certainly the folks we've been dealing with these last years, I, I think, would be extremely vehement <laughs> about, about that point. Thank so you. I don't think, yeah, I, just, I don't think that's going to be right. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you. I think it was Will Rogers said, buy land, they don't make it anymore. That's <laughs> very true. Anybody else? I, I do. Yes. I noticed in here one of the conditions for the PSC was um, a, a letter written by the wildlife agencies. One of the issues we've all talked about in past years was their timing is, I mean, sometimes it could take months and months. So do you, have you talked with them at all when, by putting this in here? Are you going to hold up anybody? Um, because it might take a month to get something in writing from the wildlife agency. We, we built the template on the East Contra Costa template, which has been approved by both state and federal agencies. So we, we are in a good position in that regard. And the changes we've made are, are clearly driven by our plan and specific situations here. This was an agenda item for a meeting that was supposed to occur a week and a half ago, but um, courtesy of the federal shutdown, it didn't occur. We will be rescheduling that meeting with Fish and Wildlife Service and both federal and state. Um, but they also understand this needs, needs to move along. So I don't see this getting, getting lost into their I'm just hoping you can get an agreement with them. Process. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm trying to. I was trying to find this really quickly, but I believe it's within the plan that this require that it's a requirement right. of the plan, and also the implementing right. agreement that we I have. I was kind of leaping through it, so I'm not. Yeah. The latter may not be true, but I think I believe it's in here. I thought when I was writing it. It is. It is. That's why I read yeah. it. It's in the plan, but. I, Still, I'm hesitant because of them. I mean, not really. I just would like you to have a conversation. Well, and that, one of the advantages of having Open Space Authority be the first entity coming out of this is the wildlife agencies have a great deal of investment in the Open Space Authority being a part of this process. So that's the other card that I can play is you really don't want to hold up the Open Space Authority, do you? And the answer will be no, we don't want to hold up the Open Space Authority. And so if we need to do some actions, we, they understand why we need to move this. Okay. And, and Ken, just, just so you heard board to executive director from Commissioner Tucker about having that conversation is during all these years, especially the last three, we've made promises to the community mm -hmm. about time is money, expediting the plan, et cetera. And if somebody, say, in, in Morgan Hill, goes to the Morgan Hill Planning Department and says, I want to develop this plan, and you look it up, and you say, OK, it's $5,000 an acre, and you, the, it was supposed to expedite the processing mm -hmm. process. And we just want to make sure that that's the case. We're not waiting on some federal or state agency. And because the constituent's right in our face. Mm -hmm. you know. And we just want to make sure, well, we've done all our part. We're just waiting for them. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be in that situation. Right. We agreed to take local control mm -hmm. with these partners in return for this promise of this, this, um, these lands and protection of species. So just, I just wanted you to hear, and I'm just speaking as, as chair, mm -hmm. commissioner has right. said, to executive director. So please yes. make a note of, of that. That is very good for me to be able to refer to that. And I've been also telling potential PSEs Personally, my objective is to try to get these agreements in place to be usable for the 2014 construction season. Yep. Right now, I mean, they're shutting down, but they want to get going, and I want to help them get going. Sure. Super. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other comments? Uh, none at all. We've got uh, the actions to adopt resolution. Do I have a motion? 
So moved. Thank Sorry. you. And and a second. Yeah. Further discussion? None. And I believe we can just say all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Passes unanimously. Vera is saying no. <laughs> <laughs> I said nothing. <laughs> are, we, are we okay? You're fine. Okay, thank yeah. you. <laughs> that was six. There is no seven. No. Our next meeting. November the 21st. And that was of both bodies, right, Ken? No, that is the implementation. That's just implementation? That's the implementation board. Governing board uh, can stay home. Governing board's off for the year then. They're off for the year. I, I might add personally to a thanks. I mean, we've met now six straight months, and yes, we, we want to move back. We want to move to the point of, of not having to meet every single month. Yes, we do. But what we've been doing, which has been critical, is moving through a whole bunch of startup requirements right. and tasks. And we're getting through that list. So I think better, uh, hopefully better days are, are ahead in 2014 in terms of meeting schedule. But again, we'll talk about meeting schedule in January. Thank you. We, we appreciate that. Yes, Vera? If I may, just a, just a cautionary note for the governing board members um, that are still here. Um, I don't expect that we will need to, but remember that we do have a lawsuit against the agency and the local partners by YCS, and if we need to call a closed session, we may need to do that. And so I'm just cautioning that. We've been in some discussions with them, and um, I don't foresee anything, but if something breaks, I may need to talk to you. Super. Okay. So. Yeah, I don't foresee either. Thank you. Yes, Commissioner Tucker. Thank you um, very much for all the, you know, the reporting and, and the packet to both of you. I, what I would like to see, though, in the future, as we go, as we get going, obviously not right now, but is your your action your the, you just got through telling us that there were several people contacting you. I would like to have visibility of in the future of what's on on the plate for you. Um, as, as far as you, you're dealing with, you know, 10 different applications in a broader sense, not detailed, but you're dealing with so many applications, you have this, you have that. So sort of like a, re, a monthly review or something. And as chair of the governing board, did you want to wish happy holidays? Did you <laughs> happy, new, happy new year? Something at all. Cause Enjoy your time off. There you go. Board members. <laughs> are you, are you Meeting adjourned. <laughs> Oh, it'll be good to not have to share this. It's all on you. There it is. Yep. You're trying to get me drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I just see the look on your face and I go, I know she doesn't like that. Wow. You can tell. <laughs> Thank you for coming all the way down here. Yes. I can just turn you some of this. Yeah.